Hi there, it's Michael Lovato again, and I'm here at the Triathlete House, Triathlete Magazine House, with Liz Blatchford. Thank you for joining me, Liz. Thanks for having me. It's not a bad location. Pretty good spot, and we've got a nice cool weather, a bit of cool weather just rolled in, so that's a pretty nice treat. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited to talk to you. So, not for any other reason than I really like you, but also the audience wants to hear these questions that I've <laughs> so cleverly created. Beginning with this one. You've been here a while. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about your decision to come here, I think about four weeks before the race, and how that's been for you so far. Yeah, um, the decision was based on last year. So obviously you live in Boulder, you were living through the floods. Yeah. Um, I decided to come out early last year when it flooded, um, when all the pools closed, there was no roads left to ride on. So I came out four weeks before the race last year and everything turned out you know, better than I expected. So this year I thought I'd just stick to the formula. And um, so yeah, three and a half weeks now I've been here. Uh, and I feel like it's been a good move. We'll find out for sure on Saturday. <laughs> so that's so. How much else do you think is uh, of your preparation has been based on? Hey, this worked, that didn't work. Do you look back and sort of try and duplicate, or how's that been for you? Yeah, I know that's the definition of insanity, isn't it? Doing the same thing, but it did work really well last year. So I've kept as much as I can the same. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, super experienced in Ironman and definitely not in Kona. So I just have stuck to as much as I could from last year. Um, not much has changed. That's great. Well, you're right. It did work. So yeah, it would be insane to change, I guess, would be the difference here. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, so uh, this year, we saw you win another Ironman title. Um, what's it like racing there? It seems like that's a very, in Cairns, it's a very hot and humid, oppressive environment, am I right? Well, it's meant to be. Like, it's, you know, uh, typically a very tropical place. But this year, we had just like a freak day it rained all day it was cold I wore a jacket on the bike um, and I'm you know I usually say that I, I love racing in the warmth and that's partly why I chose cans but yeah this year it just didn't stop raining the whole day um, so I guess I had to put put that out of my head and just try and get it done and yeah it turned out okay <laughs> yeah it was pretty good a wins a wins okay in my book so um, that's great well let's Let's just change direction because I, I think uh, what's cool is I know you a bit, um, but I think some of the things I don't know about you just involve like what brought you to Ironman racing. And you come here with, I think, such a just amazing speed and well-rounded game, but two questions. What brought you to Ironman and what's your strength as an Ironman athlete? So what brought me to Ironman? I raced ITU for 11 years and I think I was you know pretty much done and dusted in that. I, I tried to get to a couple of games, unsuccessful and getting older in my career um, so all of that just sort of led me to this path I sort of thought I might go longer after ITU and after not getting selected for the London Olympics it sort of sped up that process and I came to long course racing and um, had instant success and you know with that I just sort of inspired me more and um, so I yeah, did my first Ironman 14 or oh, 16 months ago now um, and my strength in Ironman um, I don't know I I don't feel like I have one, you know, big card. Like I don't have Rinny's Run or Jody's Swim or anything like that. But um, maybe m my ability to be sort of even across the board. Uh, and Matt Steinmetz, my coach, he always says that I'm pretty level-headed. So, you know, I'm not an irrational racer, except when I throw drink bottles and get penalties. Um, but yeah, generally I'm pretty calm about the way I race. And I think that's an important thing in Ironman. You don't want to be burning those matches and yeah, so it's kind of boring, but that's my strength, to be boring. <laughs> okay, no, that's good. It works. And Okay, well, you brought up the sort of the mental, the level-headedness. I think that's very important. So for you as, I'd say, a rookie, 14, 16 months of Ironman racing, this is being your second Kona, do you, are you taking that as a, an advantage or a disadvantage, just having that, that rookie status? Um, last year, it worked to my advantage, for sure. I was... I had no interviews, no like commitments at all race week. <laughs> I was completely just left to my own devices and that was great going in, no pressure. The only pressure I had was um, myself, from myself and that worked out. This year's a little different, but yeah, like I, I still don't feel too much pressure. I just need to go and execute on the day and I feel like, you know, if I give my best, I should be happy and I think the people that support me will be too. I, I absolutely think they will. I mean, everyone was very pleased to see you third last year. It was it was just neat to see that in a rookie performance. Um, you just made me think of a couple things. First of all, are you Australian or, or, or British? <laughs> I'm Australian. Okay. 
Oh, I was born in Britain, but I raced for Australia now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's, yeah, and then trying for the Games was obviously for Great Britain. For Britain, yeah. Um, and I asked that because I think, you know, I just, I feel like you have a very laid back personality. And to me, that's a very good trait for Ironman. Would you say that comes from growing up in Australia? I think it's a little bit more of a, I don't know, perhaps more laid back. Than... Yeah, perhaps. But I mean, yeah, that you don't really see many high strung Australians, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. But. Oh, in saying that, like how much success have the British women had in, in Ironman racing? So, and I, I wouldn't say, yeah, any of them are high strung either. So I don't know where it comes from, but um, growing up Australia is a relaxed lifestyle and definitely leads to performing in sport. And, you know, there's a, so much in the culture that revolves around sport. So, okay. So yeah. about a hundred years ago when Greg Welch won this race, were you, were you as a kid, you were involved in the sport from age 12 or 13, right? Um, yeah, 14. I 14. Did my first try, yep. Were you looking at this sport thinking that's kind of, I love the stuff, the sprints, but Ironman, that's crazy? Or was it something that always drew you in? Um, to be honest, I never paid attention to <laughs> Ironman. <laughs> I was like all about wanting to go to the Olympics. It was only a few years ago, really, that Ironman and Corona came onto my radar. And I think um, it was a couple of years ago when Leander won was the first time I watched Kona. And that really inspired me straight away. And I, you know, made that decision to try and rush and get there the next year. <laughs> That's awesome. And you did it with impressive form. I mean, you did win first one or two 70.3s. I think you were the first to beat Mel Hauschildt that year, right? <laughs> Last year. Oh, a couple years ago. Two years ago, ago yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. then I think you won a lot of races, so it's kind of kind of cool. Um, this year we haven't seen a lot of races out of you. You've seen a few. Um, has the season gone as you'd hoped with regard to preparation? Yeah. Um, this year I've definitely focused more on Kona. Mm -hmm. Last year was a lot of trying to get to Kona, so I had to do the two Ironmans in close succession to qualify. Um, and this year I just sort of revolved my whole year around performing here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I've not raced a load. Um, Cairns was sort of a, a big goal. It was my qualification, but I also wanted to do well there, and I did that, and then I'm here. So, I mean, I, I don't want to say that those other races didn't matter, but you know, compared to this, I guess they didn't. Um, so I did a few other races, but yeah, this is okay. what the year's about. The focus, that's yeah. great. Well, it's going to be exciting. And um, a couple of questions just regarding the way the race plays out. You're new to it, so you know one year, but how does that have that the dynamic for you work with Jody Swallow, Daniela Rice, some of these gals that race, I think similar to you with a very strong swim, Rachel Joyce perhaps? Yeah, I mean, last year from you know, everything I've heard, it was the first year that there was a real front group on the bike. And I think that's played to my advantage, um, you know, having a group to work with. I mean, Rini still ran through all of us, like <laughs> it seemed like no worries, but um, yeah, I, I hope to be out with the leaders um, and I'll try and hang near the front as long as I can on the bike. Uh, this year, I think the women's race especially is gonna be super interesting. Um, we've got, I think every girl that was top 10 last year is racing. Plus, you throw in um, Daniela Riff, obviously. Jody, who didn't finish last year, had a bad day. Um, Mary Beth was injured last year. Leander was injured last year. So it's crazy strong in the women's, and it's going to make for a super exciting racing. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm more excited about watching the women's race than the men's, and that's just because it has changed so much. And there are so many dynamic talents, and you bring a lot to the table. Um, so question for you here before we dive into the rapid fire. What run split are you going to have on Sunday or Saturday? Go ahead, just tell us. No idea. Prediction? No? No idea. Well, last year I was 3.03, so I'd love to go a little, a little faster. A little faster, <laughs> under that three hour barrier for sure. But, that would um, be good. <laughs> that'd be good. Okay. Well, well we do have, good. if you're willing to play the rapid fire game, we're going to go into some rapid fire questions and you just to bang out quick answers. Right. Are you ready for that? I'll probably stutter and okay. stumble, but yeah. We'll start with this one. Do you drink coffee race week? No. Do you use the AC race week? Yes. Do you use compression socks race week? Not socks, but normal tech boots. Do you ever wear compression socks? No. Rapid fire. What about this? Uh, will you be at the underpants run or not? No. Uh, do you abstain from any activities, any nightly activities, race week? Any nightly activities? Well, we know Glenn's here. <laughs> um, no. Okay. How about will you root for, for example, if Crowey and Maka were uh, racing, which one would you root for? Um, Crowey's a closer friend, yeah. Okay. All right, good. So you've passed with flying colors. Do you have any questions for me? Um, no. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your answers. We all look forward to seeing you race. We think you're going to be right up in the mix again. And uh, we'll see you out there on race course. Guys, thanks for joining us at Strathlete House. We'll be back again with more fascinating interviews. Good night.